Welcome back, Square Steaders. Uh, this is this is Mike and and Jesse. Uh, we're Square One Farms, and uh, all too often I get asked a couple of questions. One is, Mike, I don't have those cool overalls. Can I be a homesteader? Yes, you can be a homesteader. But I don't have a big beard. Can I still be a homesteader? You too can be a homesteader. Yes, you can. Seriously, homesteading, <laughs> homesteading is one of those things that uh, that is really romanticized, uh, kind of like sitting in front of this fire and uh, trying to be cool about it, and it's really smoky fire, and we're just going to fight it the whole video. Uh, but it's one of those romanticized things, and uh, if if you've gotten this far and, and you're interested in in homesteading. We'd like to present this series to you, uh, a few things that um, we feel is important to know uh, starting out, especially on a shoestring budget. Um, and I think the most important thing that has to happen before you go any further is to open up that line of communication with your wife or your significant other or, or whatever, and maybe you're single. But what we'd like to do is kind of give you our backstory and uh, tell you how we got here and how that conversation even started. So uh, I guess Jesse can, can take over from here uh, and, and start telling y'all um, why we felt that this, this series of videos was important and where we came from. start out and tell you about us right people have been wanting to get to know us better so I guess we'll start from the the very very beginning and to start at the very beginning since Mike is way older than I am we'll start there Mike was born in the big city of Fort Worth Texas from there he moved around to South West Missouri, Northwest Arkansas. So when we talk about Mike and where he's from, we just label it Northwest Arkansas, correct? I guess, yeah. Uh, I'm like Johnny Cash. I've been everywhere, man. Really? <laughs> okay, so, and then there was me, a sweet little baby, right? My mom and dad won't say that about me. They said I was a bad baby, but whatever. We're moving right along from there. Uh, I was born and raised in L.A., uh, not to be, you know, confused with the real L.A., I mean Lower Arkansas, a real small town. I was born and raised there, and uh, I actually kind of grew up gardening. By that, I mean um, I picked my dad's garden for him, and it was quite large. Uh, Mike grew up in the city. We both ended up in the military right mm -hmm. we both ended up in the military uh, we were stationed at Hill Air Force Base Utah I don't know what y'all know about Utah but for me you took a little country bunking and uh, put her in the big city it was great uh, we met there and we ended up getting married having kids one kid. We had the other one once we got back to Arkansas. So um, we ended up back in my hometown as soon as we got out of the military. Uh, we lived on my parents' land. Uh, we put a house down there. Uh, lived there for what, two years? Mm -hmm. uh, Mike ended up uh, after the military crossing over to civil service. So we decided at that point uh, we were going to start pursuing what society says is the American dream we so we moved to where the town we're in now uh, we bought what we thought was a big house right uh, so we had this house on an acre lot right in the middle of town and by this time we had our second daughter um, we were living in town on this acre lot and I guess something was missing for us. Uh, we didn't really know what it was, but something was. Uh, we ended up having a series of, of long talks. Um, our daughter actually 
helped us, the oldest daughter actually kind of helped us go into this, uh, this lifestyle because she, at a very, very young age, had a love for animals. And uh, story time, what happened, uh, she found a baby bird in our front yard that she thought had a broken wing. She ran inside to get popsicle sticks and tape and everything else and she was gonna fix this bird and save it. Her and the little neighbor boy, well, she gets out there to uh, tape its wings and the bird was dead. She thought that perhaps the, the little neighbor boy had killed the bird. So she was in a tizzy, all of us parents were out there and it was just drama. So Mike tried to comfort her and tell her if she would just calm down, he would get her some birds. And so he went the very next day to the feed store and bought six chickens. Luckily, they were still in season because this was in the summer and around here, they stopped selling chickens uh, in the summer. So that started it for us. And we had all of that right there in town. Uh, like I said, um, as time rocked on, we felt like something was missing. We had a lot of uh, in-depth talks. And finally, Mike quit his job. And we threw what we considered to be the American dream away and moved out here uh, on this land and started pursuing homesteading, farming, farmsteading, whatever you really want to call it. So I guess this next series of videos will basically tell you how we got from two kids just getting by, living the dream, to two adults doing what we really love. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, th I think it's important to, to you know, understand obviously there were a lot of uh, in-betweens of what she just explained there were a lot of, of uh, conversations and, and a lot of action that happened and and, um, and we're gonna go over that over the next series of uh, videos um, but you know right now I guess on this video we, we kind of want to focus on what it is that we talked about you know um, and what kind of conversation you need to open up with um, in, in order to get your partner uh, on board and that's a big deal you know there's a lot of uh, we've, we've come across a lot of people that actually that's their number one hurdle is getting their wife or their husband or whoever uh, on board with them to to do this and and the reason it's so important is because ultimately what you're doing is is uh, changing your entire lifestyle um, you're looking at money differently you're looking at how you live differently what you eat differently everything that you do is 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 different and um, so getting getting your significant other on on board is a pretty um, big thing so I mean what were those what were those conversations that we had um, uh, you know we had mentioned in, in earlier videos about this time last year we put out a video explaining that doomsday preppers kind of got us was probably a, a kickstart along with the, the chickens that we bought um, started doing the prepping thing uh, for a minute and then uh, I guess that led us into more homesteading instead of prepping and um, once again those those conversations started with something about uh, you know what would happen in an apocalypse or something like that and because I love I love a good conspiracy theory <laughs> I really do I love it yeah <laughs> But you know, so we, we went down that road and and uh, looked for for answers to all that stuff, and um, ultimately it, it led us down this road. Now the the conversations that ultimately led to a homesteading lifestyle were the real big questions, such as me quitting my job. And uh, once again, we're going to go over that uh, in the next video. We're doing to be debt free, right? How to get debt free? Yes, yes. Right, so that, the next, that was the first thing that we did. Through debt, yeah. So getting debt free, how we did it, and um, you know maybe some tips for you. And so that was big. So once you make that decision and you have those conversations, um, you know we we uh, that was another whole year. 
you know, in preparation. So right, and what I feel like whenever you have those, those conversations with whoever you're having them with, um, we don't know your circumstances. We we only know ours, so that's what we're going to base this off of, and just hope that something we say uh, helps you in your journey. The the biggest issue that we struggled with in these conversations that we had with each other was not having the conversations, but being honest with ourselves. Are you not feeling the romantic yeah, the, gestures the, of the yeah. fire? This is kind of like, you know, it's so romantic to go split your own firewood and be a homesteader until you go out there and do it for three days. And then you're like, mm-hmm. And that's where I'm at now. This is really romantic, you know, with the fire in the video, but. Um, You'll be, he'll, he'll be okay. We do this all the time. We're professionals, right? Yeah. So, back, back to what I was saying, uh, it, I don't like him being behind me. Sneaky now. Uh, I, stop. Okay. Like I said, the most important thing is not necessarily having the conversations, but having honest conversations. Um, because, you know, with the whole prepping thing, we had, we had the conversations, the conversations were there, but whenever the conversations started, they weren't honest. I don't think, to a right. certain extent. I mean, uh, with the prepping, we thought that was fun. Uh, you know, just, it it really just gave us something to do. It wasn't until probably three years after the whole prepping thing that we finally really, really talked about what we were doing and uh, how we were gonna get there. And that's, that's when it came up that we weren't really happy uh, living in town and doing doing the town thing. Really? We were Haha, <laughs> uh -huh, sucker. I'm stuck in the chair. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> okay. All right, we're back. Yeah. Winds of change. <laughs> the winds of time. The winds of time whatever it don't matter so again have the conversations be honest with yourself um, we were not honest with ourselves starting out um, we were not honest with what our end game was going to be um, I think in, in the beginning we had uh, you know like this fire romantic notions about what this lifestyle was all about um, you know, we we were under the impression that it was just uh, rainbows and unicorns. Yeah, we bought in for sure. We bought into the romantic notion and watched the YouTube videos and with the great music and cinematic, you know, photography and and this great thing. And it's real easy to do that. And you know, <clears throat> I attribute it to kind of like um, working out, like. It, it's really the last thing you want to do. You don't really like to work out, but when you're done, it's very rewarding, and you know that you did a good job, and that's a lot what this is. It's, it's hard. It's really hard, but uh, it doesn't take long to uh, for it to pay off and, and be really rewarding. Right. I think that's, that was a big thing uh, with the whole honesty thing. We were, we were so wrapped up into the fairy tale life that we never factored in that this was going to be hard. Um, we never factored in that this was, you know, not, gonna, not starting out. We didn't realize this was this was going to be what it is. Are we glad we stuck with it? Yeah, we're we're really glad that we stuck with it. But you know, back to the honest with each other and having everybody on the same page. I'll tell you right now that there are days, weeks, even months that Mike wanted to give up doing this? There had been multiple times I've told Jesse, I'm gonna go get a job, I'm done. I'm gonna go get a job. And I would tell him no, and then turn around no time later, and I would be the one that wanted to quit, and just, I'm not cut out for this, I can't do it. I don't wanna do it anymore, and he would be like, no, well, I'm gonna keep going, I've got. And so that's why we think it's very important to have the conversations, to be honest with each other, uh, just keep your lines of communication open and honest because there's going to come times when you want to quit or somebody in the family wants to quit and 
I think as long as nobody wants to quit, if everybody doesn't want to quit at the same time, it'll work out. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we feel like there balance was, if, each other up. Yeah, yeah, if there was ever a time we both wanted to quit at the same time, it probably would have, our story would have ended differently. Probably. We would probably both be back in our cushy jobs. We would probably be back in town. Uh, all of the land and stuff that we have acquired over the years would have been on the market and we would just go back to doing what we were doing before but we never wanted to quit at the same time so yeah have those understand your wants versus needs we'll get into that in our next video um and uh being honest is, is the most important be honest with yourself and be honest with with uh your, your partner that you're going into this uh, whole uh, journey with because those are really important. Um, your your questions to each other and your talks are going to be different than ours. I mean, ours, ours started out because of our situation, you know, because of how much money we were making or how much, w where we were living or our background in the military or, I mean, our, our conversations are, are, are going to be completely different than yours, but I think most importantly what you need to walk away with is just be honest with yourself so that you can be honest with uh, your spouse um, and, and even your kids and, and um, involve your kids in that. Another topic. Anyway, <clears throat> I guess we're going to wrap this up and, and uh, stay tuned for our next video that, and we're going to start talking about how we got debt free. Once again, uh, so some of that will not apply to you, I'm sure, but uh, ways we got debt free and why it's so important before you start your homesteading journey. Uh, until the next video, y'all, this is Mike and Jesse from Square One Farms, and we'll see you. Oh. <laughs>